Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. Um, we're just going to talk about um, creation and the evolution and the uh, creationist and intelligent design debate. And I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. And it says in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then if you'd like to turn to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth, and their word to the ends of the earth. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of the chamber, and rejoice like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and is a circuit to another end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Uh, so we, we just looked at uh, Genesis chapter 1 and Psalm 19. Now let, let's turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Well, if we, if we just turn to Romans chapter 1 first. Verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And then Romans chapter 5, we read... Uh, Romans 5 Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and the dust death spread to all men, because all sin, for unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offence, for it is by one man's offence many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. So here we have um, a biblical narrative of creation. We have in Genesis chapter 1 clearly a demonstration of the creator God creating the world out of nothing. Then we have in Genesis 19, uh, Psalm 19 a celebration of this creation. And then in Romans chapter 1 we see that this is an apologetic against those who do not believe in God. That they can see God within creation. Uh, the intelligence of God, the beauty of God, uh, the goodness of God. And then we see in Romans chapter 5 that this creation was rooted in real history. That Adam was a real person. And Jesus is a real person. That's how the biblical narrative presents itself. Now, we are presented with some problems. We're presented with, first of all, evolutionists. Evolutionists come along and they say, well, actually, scientifically speaking, evolution uh, has proved this whole paradigm of biblical understanding is completely wrong. Um, the problem with that is, is this, is that this issue of origins is not just a scientific issue it's an issue that goes to the fundamental core of who we are as human beings and when we take a position of who we are as human beings we're setting up a paradigm uh, a structural belief of what it is uh, to be a society what it is to be human what is the meaning of life in other words the issue of origins affects every aspect metaphysically philosophically socially etc so it is naive to say that this is just a scientific view 
or a scientific understanding. This is a, a, a clear, structural, compact world view which is predisposed against the biblical world view. And if that is the case, it has massive implications for whether, uh, for what we are as human beings and philosophical, etc., etc., ethics, etc., etc. Um, now you may be thinking, well, Jay, that's irrelevant. The question is, is it true? Is it scientifically true? And here's the here's the problem. Those who have opted for this evolution are not opting for the scientific facts because from a scientific basis evolution can never ever be proven it's an absolute impossibility it it cannot be proven and it cannot be proven because of the time factor you have you 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 your you have a period of time of over 3 billion years and it is just not possible. It is impo It is an absolute impossibility to prove your position as, as an evolutionist with that time period. The amount of evidence that you would need to substantiate your position uh, would be astronom astronomical. And you haven't got that evidence. So it can never ever be proven. So, those who say that evolution is true are doing it on a dogmatic base. They are not doing it on a scientific base. They are doing it on a dogmatic base. And if it's true to say, as I have just said, that evolution is a world view, then it will have implications about what we are human. And guess what? One of the significant things about evolution, if you accept it, is it dehumanizes human beings. It says that they are insignificant, they, they are a little dots on the edge of the universe, and that they are meaningless. That's the implication of evolution. There is no right and wrong, there are no ethics, there is no value about being human. That is the implication of this worldview of evolution. It destroys free will, which is another core element of what it is to be human. In other words, it completely destroys what it is to be human. That's the implication of evolution. Um, Gunning for God by John Lennox is, will be helpful on what it is to be human if you want to read the is or distinction if you want to get into details there so that is where it's at with evolution on the cre the issue of of um, the biblical narrative and the evolutionary narrative now the other issue is uh, then you have the bio, -log bio logos people who were Christians but they are using um, evolution uh, they're basically just collapsing to the prevailing culture of the time. Uh, they're not being biblical and fair to the biblical text. Now, I know a fellow brother on YouTube, uh, and I respect him. They can come out with technical versatility in looking at the Greek and the Hebrew and what the early church fathers say, etc. But at the end of the day, the text speaks for itself, and it's very plain and simple. Uh, what the Bible teaches and you go back to Romans 5 Paul is talking about real history so you can't allegorize the creation account as if it was over thousands or millions of years or billions of years um, etc so the Biologus Foundation and people like Alvin Plantinga who I admire and respect and William Lane Craig who believe in evolution uh, theistic evolution and Christians they're going completely against the word of God and it it is a serious issue um, I think I don't agree with those Christians who say the Christians and the biologos people and Christians we can all get on I don't really believe that I don't really believe it really deep down I think it's it's dangerous and I say that when some of the best people that I love, people like Charles Hodge and B.B. Warfield, also failed, and uh, Strong, failed to see the significance and the danger of evolution. Because as Thunderfoot said, even Thunderfoot said, if it is, uh, if it is not real history, Genesis 1 and 2, then at the end of the day, Jesus died for an allegory. That's the implication 
and I think Thunderfoot is correct to state that. Even the critics of Christianity are much better at understanding what Genesis is saying than the biologos or the theistic evolutionist. So that's the second issue there. Then the issue is intelligent design. I think intelligent design is helpful but I th don't think it's helpful in the sense that they come across as if they're ashamed of creationists uh, in the sense that um, the intelligent design people need to you know are trying to get respect with the academy and bring in creationism in the back door with intelligent design and I don't agree with that in the sense that you know call a spade a spade and you shouldn't be ashamed of the creationist implications of your intelligent design apologetics and then the final thing is the creationist just because I don't believe in evolution because I don't believe in theistic evolution because uh, I am a mildly respect intelligent design does not mean say that I am this rank creationist who says whatever creationists say is just completely right no I, I don't agree with that whatsoever I, I don't believe in obscurantism and I don't believe in anti-intellectualism and I don't believe in pseudoscience and a lot of creationism can be pseudoscience so I'm not advocating that but what I am advocating is that there are scientists who do take a creationist position who are trying to do good science and I think that if they're trying to do that then it should be listened to the whole the whole upshot is of this is this is that it's basically I don't think really ultimately any position can be absolutely totally nailed and proved I, I don't think that because we're talking about one event the creation of the world now from a scientific point of view science is based on repeated investigation repeating and hypotheses and testing it and that that requires repetition but the creation of the world happened once so you can't repeat the creation of the world so therefore there's always going to be an element of the boundary of the unknowable and I think any position who says that they've nailed it I don't think they can whether it be creationist or the evolutionist what we can do is we can look at which world view has a better understanding of what it is to be human and its implications for reality and works in reality and like I said the evolutionary worldview does not work whatsoever in reality so it cannot possibly be true but the creationist account works in reality it tells us that we are significant it tells us why we can have relationships it tells us that we can build a society based on what is right and wrong excuse me irrespective of social norms and therefore I think that the creationist account is also realistic in telling us the problem that is society which is sin and the solution which is Christ and um, that's what I think I really do think those things so I think that any position is really dogmatic and I would prefer to stick to the biblical narrative and the implications that it has in reality on the practical everyday life of society and individual relationships and I think the Christian account of creation is much better uh, than any evolutionary biologos or any other theistic evolution and um, not to be dogmatic on either way um, because ultimately it cannot be proven I think that's what I think